today on Inside Poker. An exclusive interview with the man who started it all, the legendary Doyle Brunson. Head to head with the 2004 World Series of Poker champion, Greg Raymer. A tournament playing tip with the World Series of Poker bracelet winner, Todd Brunson. And don't miss Savage on the River. This is Inside Poker. The following interview with poker legend Doyle Brunson is provided by doylesroom.net. Play against the legend for free. Visit doylesroom.net today. One name stands above all the rest when it comes to poker. Doyle Brunson. A small town farm boy from the plains of West Texas, Doyle would grow from his humble beginnings to become one of the most famous poker players in the world and is known as the man who helped pioneer and revolutionize the world of poker. Winning the World Series of Poker twice and 10 gold bracelets, he has become even more famous for his contributions to the game and for setting a higher standard of achievement that all other players are measured by. His love for the game has made him one of the most honored and respected poker players in the world. Let's join our host, Matt Savage, as he sits down for an exclusive interview with the legend himself, Mr. Doyle Brunson. Welcome to Inside Poker. I'm Matt Savage, and I'm with the man when you think poker, you think of this guy's name. The legendary Doyle Brunson. He's done it all in poker, and he's still succeeding and having a great life in poker. Welcome, Doyle. Thank, Thank you, you so Matt. much for coming. Yeah, you're welcome. My really pleasure. a pleasure to have you on the show. You started the World Series of Poker in this building right here. Does it still give you any kind of feeling when you walk in the doors here at Binion's? Yeah, I come in the door, I start looking for Benny <laughs> and Teddy Jane, and, you know, all the old-time gamblers. And, uh, yeah, it does. there's a sense of history here like no place else. So the fact that the World Series isn't here anymore, I mean, is that like a kind of a loss for you? Yeah, it, you know, it, I know everything's got to move on, but when it, when the World Series left here, you know, it, it just left a lot of tradition. You know, for somebody like me, you know, that I was that the first one, and I was in all of them up until a certain point. Right. And, uh, yeah, I miss it. I miss the horseshoe. So you've seen poker go from seven players to now 5,600 players. You got any thoughts on that? I mean, it's just an amazing... Six players. Six players? Yeah. Okay, first, I thought it was first one was six, no. Six players. Yeah. Okay. I never dreamed it could get this big. Uh, nobody in their right mind would ever thought that it could. And, you know, America's found out what I've known for 50 years. You know, it's the greatest game that there is. So they're really beginning to discover it, you know, because of the Internet, uh, the media, these whole card cameras and everything. That, it's just uh, propelled it out of sight. Is it true that you might not even have ever been in this game if you hadn't blown out your knee playing oh, basketball? I mean, it's probably it's. I'm, I'd say it's 99 percent, and I, I never wow. would have. Yeah, wow, I had my sights set on being in the NBA, and you know the Lakers had already been to, to my college to say that I'd be a first-round draft choice the next year, and then I smashed my leg that summer, and so. I, I would have gone ahead. I would have, you know, I would have played in the NBA. I think I could, could have played in the NBA at that time, not now. <laughs> but uh, and then I think I would have came out and I would have had a master's degree to teach, and I probably would have been a teacher. Wow. So, I mean, how much after that time did you find poker? I started playing poker when I was a graduate student to help pay my tuition and my uh, room and board. The poker tournaments these days are a bit unfair for the you know, generation that started poker. They're endurance contests, and you're one of the few that have been able to overcome these things, uh, playing 10, 12, 14 hours a day. It 16. really is, yeah, 16 hours a day. It really isn't fair. How are you able to do this? If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Really? Is that the way you feel? I mean, that you don't think it should be no. short? And you really like the endurance? I don't, well, I don't like it, but I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't want any favoritism. I don't expect any, and I don't want any rules changed for my generation or, or me. I sure, I sure don't want any rules changed for myself. And so, no, I mean, I, 
I was blessed with uh, great endurance, you know, all my life, and and I've still got it to a certain degree. If I have to, you know, I can still sit there and play. You say you have to, but it's sometimes your your cash games go around the clock, right? Yeah, even that, now. But that's the only concession I've made to getting older. I do quit those cash games at a certain point. Where I used to, I never would until, you know, the game kind of dried up. Well, a lot of the cash players feel that this tournament, uh, these tournament players, they don't know anything. Uh, you, I don't think you ever have had that opinion. It's a, you have to realize it's a different thing. The tournament players are tournament players. You know, and, and they do what they do. They do it well. The cash game players, I think, are a little more versatile. They can do both, maybe. But you know, I know I don't put anybody down for just being just a tournament player because uh, you know that's what they do. We'll be back for more of Doyle Brunson's exclusive interview. But first we'll go head-to-head with the 2004 World Series of Poker champion, Greg Raymer. Plus we'll have a tournament playing tips with Todd Brunson when Inside Poker returns. This is the awesome Cadillac Escalade. And these are the keys to the awesome Cadillac Escalade. On April 23rd, we gave away a brand new 2007 Cadillac Escalade and a whole bunch of other great prizes. Now our win a Cadillac promotion is back, so if you missed it last time, sign up now at PartyPoker.net. PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. Inside Poker is presented by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. More players, more tables, more winners at PartyPoker.net. And by InsidePoker.tv. Get tips and watch streaming video at Poker's first web video channel, InsidePoker.tv. Let's go head-to-head with the 2004 World Series of Poker champion, Greg Raymer. I'm going to give you a one-word question, and I want you to (laughs) tell me how it relates to you in poker. Luck. It relates to everyone in poker. It's a big part of the game. Fear. Fear? I don't find fear very relevant to me. Um, some opponents are tougher than others, but there's no reason to fear them. Tradition? Uh, I, I, I consider tradition a non-issue in any, in any part of life. Sitting right here in Binion's? No tradition? It's, it's a great place and all that, but... Uh, you know, I guess because I'm a very, you know, kind of logical, analytical guy, tradition to me isn't that important. Money. Money's nice. Pacing. I mean, how do you feel about changing gears in the tournament? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't ever consciously do that. I, I don't, I mean, I change gears a lot, but not because I'm consciously thinking I have to change gears. I try to play each hand for itself. So that naturally means that because I have to consider what hands have led up to it, I'm going to change gears. So you wouldn't approach a, like a Superstars event different from the main event of the World Series of Poker? Well, I would, but not because of some advanced planning on my part, but because of either how my opponents are playing or if it's the first hand or two, how I expect them to be playing in this event. Failure? Not an option. Not an option. Growth? The size of the game growing oh, by leaps and bounds. I thought you, <laughs> thought you might have been referring to my midsection. Um, Actually, you look a little slimmer than you did in 2004. You know, I hear that you do. constantly, oh. and I haven't lost a pound in years. <laughs> I don't think I've gained a pound in the last five or six years, but I haven't lost a pound either. Okay. So. But the growth of the game, I love it. I mean, obviously, all the things we can do away from the table, at least personally, I, I like having those options, those ways of making a living without having to risk my own money to win more money at the poker table. And, you know, the more the merrier in the tournaments. Um, You know, when we do, you know, a small tournament where we invite the best players in the world, you know, if you open that field up from from 10 to 100, you know, the average skill level is going to go down. When you go from 100 to 6,000, like we did in the main event this year, clearly the, the average skill level has to drop again, which means my profitability, my expected value goes up. Sizing up your opponents, is that important to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, like they say, poker is a game of people played with cards, and I believe that. Um, It's funny because I come from this logical, analytical background where you'd expect me to play more mathematical by the book, but the math and the book, that's the second half of the equation. The first half of the equation is figuring out your opponents, 
figuring out what they're thinking this time, this hand. And once you have that information, these estimates of what they're doing, what cards they're playing, now you apply the math. How would you do against eight other Greg Raymers at the table? I should break even. <laughs> Sounds about right. Thanks again, Greg. Thank All you. right, thanks, man. <laughs> Stay tuned, poker players. We'll be back with more of Doyle Brunson's exclusive interview. Plus a tournament playing tip with Todd Brunson and Savage on the River when Inside Poker returns. This is the awesome Cadillac Escalade. And these are the keys to the awesome Cadillac Escalade. On April 23rd, we gave away a brand new 2007 Cadillac Escalade and a whole bunch of other great prizes. Now our win a Cadillac promotion is back, so if you missed it last time, sign up now at PartyPoker.net. PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. Inside Poker is being brought to you by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. More players, more tables, more winners at PartyPoker.net. And by InsidePoker.tv. Get tips and watch streaming video at Poker's first web video channel, InsidePoker.tv. Once again, let's join our host, Matt Savage, as he sits down with the most legendary poker player in the world, Doyle Brunson. A lot of the interviews I do and people that I talk to say, we want to take poker out of the back smoky room and bring it into the light and have a sponsorship and all that. You played in those back rooms and the smoky rooms back in Texas, did you not? I mean, it was a different mentality at that time. Uh, how do you feel about people when they say the old smoky rooms and, I mean, you came from those times. I don't think that the uh, younger generation or players or whatever you want to call them. I don't think they really respect what we went through to get poker out of, out of the smoky back rooms. I mean, it was, it was a lot of danger, a lot of, uh, a lot of traumatic things happened in those years. Uh, it was an adventure. You know, I, 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 would, I wouldn't want to go through it again, but at the time it was fun. Uh -huh. And, you know, I didn't realize until later, you know, just actually how dangerous it really yeah. was, yeah. I mean, it's very easily, I mean, was there really guns on the table some games? And sometimes, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Can you tell the story of 10 Deuce? I mean, the inside poker people and, and people around the industry know what 10 Deuce means. Why is that called the, you know, the Texas Dolly Hand? Why, why, how did that come about? Well, the 10 Deuce, I won two tournaments with it, the both world championships that just happened. The first time I deliberately played, played it, because I was trying to uh, beat Jesse Alto after I had just beaten him a pot. Okay. So that was I kind of that was planned. The next year it was just a it, just a freak of nature. It just came up to where I had tens and deuces. Another guy had eights and fives. So uh, you know, and I won both tournaments, and it became the Doyle Brunson hand. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, so you're sitting in a game. You're sitting in the main event, the World Series, the first hand that comes to you is ten deuce. You kind of smile in your mind. I know I, you don't smile outwardly, but you kind of get a little smile. And I catch it an abnormal amount of times, believe me. Really? <laughs> and I play, try to play it once each tournament, and I always show it. Uh -huh. But, but uh, I tried playing it for a long time, but it's such a bad hand, I finally said, shoot, throw it away. <laughs> well, it's, it's transformed a lot, you know, the game and the World Series of Poker. What do you think about the new young kids coming in, fist pumping, screaming, yelling, antagonizing each other. I mean, to a guy like you, I, I, I've never seen you act with anything but class. I mean, how does that make you feel? I don't know. I guess maybe I'm a purist when it comes to poker. I don't think that uh, the showmanship, deliberate, deliberate sh showmanship is the right thing to do. I don't mind people showing their emotions, getting mad, saying things, but, you know, when they do it just for to try to be on television like they were singing and dancing and hooping and hollering. No, that, I don't like that. Uh, but even some of the guys you've played with for 10 years or the guys that started, I mean, started all of this. I mean, you know, the guys like uh, Phil Hummuth or Mattisau, you know, these guys come in and they've seen what they can do with television and it's actually worked to their benefit. They've got more sponsorship deals because of that. Phil is a tireless self-promoter. He's done more for himself by promoting himself than anybody and it's uh, it works to his advantage. So well, Phil has the, he's promoted himself very well, and but 
I really believe that he shows his true emotions. Right. He's, uh, you know, he can be a jerk at the poker table, you know. I mean, I love Phil. I, really, I like him away from the poker table. The poker table, I don't like him at all. <laughs> but I don't like many people when I sit at the poker table. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's your business. It's what you have to do. So we talk about Moneymaker pretty much in every interview now. And we talk about what his, his contribution to the game is. It's a different kind of contribution. I mean, how do you feel yeah. his name, the timing, the online? How do you think that all affected our game today? Well, Chris Moneymaker, to start with, is a very nice guy. I mean, he really is a prince of a fellow. I think that he promoted himself pretty well after he won it. I mean, he happened to have such a great name, you know, Moneymaker. Yes. I mean, what a, what a great name, you know, to promote a poker player. Right. So uh, I think he's done a good job, and he's not a real top poker player yet, but he will be maybe. I mean, I, I think he works at it, and, and he's a class guy. Your son plays poker now. Todd plays poker. You know, he's a professional poker player. When he first started playing, what were your thoughts? I mean, did you think that this was a good thing? Are you supportive of him 100%? Todd was in school to be a lawyer. He was through three years of college. I didn't even know he knew how to play poker. Wow. I'd never discussed gambling around my house at all. My wife was an ex-pharmacist, and she didn't know anything about gambling. And I really wasn't planning on anybody following in my footsteps. And then he came home after his third year in college, and he said, uh, you know, I'm going to be a professional poker player. Well. My wife was furious, and I acted like I was. But you know, secretly I was pleased. I didn't know he knew how to play, so but I took him around to a few games, and I saw right away that he had what it took to be a poker player. I could see it in him, and I think if he had the desire that you know that I had when I was a kid, I think he could actually be maybe the best poker player ever. Really, I really think that because he's got the best recall of anybody I've ever been around. You know, he remembers things back when he was six months old. It, it's really amazing. And he don't, you know, he was successful too fast. He won a tournament when he was 21 years old. You know, he made good investments. He's been financially secure for a long time. And I think that's kind of diminished his desire to really be. you got to get broke playing poker. I got broke 100 times in my life. Wow. But, but he worked his way up through the ranks. Everybody thinks I gave him money to start playing at these high levels. I didn't. He came up right through the 5, 10, the 10, 20, you know, worked his way up. I got a lot of respect for him as a poker player. He, uh, at the, the World Series of Poker, he won his first bracelet this year, yeah. 2005. Uh, he came out of that, and a bit unfairly, everybody wanted to talk about you yeah. and your relationship. I mean, is it a bit unfair that that happens to him? Do you think that... I mean, how is that going to It is unfair out? because people think that, you know, that I taught him and gave him money and everything. I didn't. He did it all himself. It's funny you said that because we're sitting over at the Golden Nugget a few nights ago, and there was six older people sitting next to us, and they kept looking over, you know, and I guess they recognized me. Finally, they came over and said, excuse us, sir, but aren't you Todd Brunson? <laughs> that had to make Todd feel pretty Todd good. Todd liked that, yeah. <laughs> He's going to tell that story forever. Well, Doyle, I really appreciate your time. I know that everything you've done for poker has really made us a lot further along than we are today, and we couldn't have done it without you, so I really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, man. My pleasure. We'll be right back with more Inside Poker. Up next, we'll get a tournament playing tip with World Series of Poker bracelet winner Todd Brunson. And don't miss Savage on the River. This is the awesome Cadillac Escalade. And these are the keys to the awesome Cadillac Escalade. Ooh. On April 23rd, we gave away a brand new 2007 Cadillac Escalade and a whole bunch of other great prizes. Now our win a Cadillac promotion is back. So if you missed it last time, sign up now at PartyPoker.net. PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. Inside Poker is being brought to you by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. More players, more tables, more winners at PartyPoker.net. And by Poker Player Newspaper, the source for poker news and information. Pick it up in poker rooms across the country. Here's a playing tip with World Series of Poker bracelet winner, Todd Brunson. 
We're here at the Commerce with Todd Brunson, great player. World Poker Tour event, almost 700 players. How do you navigate your way through a field like this? Oh, there's a million different ways to do it, a million different styles. Some people play real tight, some people play real loose, hyper aggressive, and uh, one's not necessarily right. It's the beauty of poker is any style that you can find that you can make work is, you know, that's what you got to go with. Why does it appear that the aggressive players are making their way and winning these events? Uh, well, some of them are structured real fast, especially WPT events tend to double a lot, double and double and double, so you can't sit back and wait for a big hand. You guys keep playing and trying to accumulate chips, so, you know, more aggressive players, you know, even though they may wind up uh, having to race with the worst hands a lot, they're picking up a lot of those small pots and they wind up with a lot of chips. You're well known uh, in the poker industry as being, you know, one of the best cash players in the world. Does that mean a lot to you, or would you rather have, you know, the the big wins in the big tournaments? I mean, what? Or at the end of the day, is it just the money that's all that matters? Well, the money's mostly what matters, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's kind of frustrating. Your ego can get bruised when <laughs> these guys are horrible players, and they get all this media recognition as being great players when they're not, and. So obviously you'd like to end every day at the tournament as a chip leader, but if you have just average chips, what are you thinking going into day number two of one of these big events? Well, average chips is always fine with me. You know, you can't win it until the last day. So the main thing is to hang around and you know be be somewhere around par and uh, you know go to the final table with some chips, and then uh, that's when you got to get lucky and that's when you got to kind of make your move. But you know, like I said, you can't win it on the first day. You just got to survive. So different scenario. You're short stacked going into day number two. Do you start the day off with a thought in mind of doubling up? Yeah, right away? you definitely have to. Do, you've got to keep that in mind that you might have to race with, you know, a flush draw, and, and you know, when you know you're going to be a dog, you just know you got to double up, or the blinds are going to wind up eating you away. So yeah, you got to. If you're a short stack, you definitely got to gamble on coming into day two. The other extreme, you're the chip leader going into day two. Then it depends on what's important to you. If you uh, if you got into the tournament on a forty dollars satellite, then uh, you might just want to make the money and get that uh, you know twelve thousand or whatever and lock that up and then then gamble. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I want to get first place, so I might push it and try and uh, get a whole lot more chips. You know, depends you know depends on the individual individual person. Thanks, Todd. Great advice. Now here's Matt Savage on the river. Ladies' events, senior events, celebrity events, home games, bar tournaments. There's a lot going on out in poker these days, but I tell you what, it's all good for the game. There's a lot of competition out there, and it's fierce. We need to support all of them. I think that poker needs to grow, and I think if we all work together, it's going to be big for all of us. I'm Matt Savage, On the River. When in Las Vegas, the Inside Poker Crew stays at Binion's Hotel. For reservations, please call 1-800-937-6537 or book your room online at binions.com. Thanks for joining us. Protect your blinds and know when to lay them down. For Matt Savage and Courtney Perna, I'm Kristen Rubis. We'll see you at the table next time on Inside Poker.